Hello and welcome everybody to this Azure Sign Up Success. So my name is Stan Owens and today I'm going to show you how to create a landing zone and how to tap into an existing landing zone using Microsoft Fabric. Now let's head over to a slide where we'll talk about the scenario uh, about what we'll be tackling today. As you've seen in the previous videos, we're basically now going to show you how to get some data sources, uh, either to shortcut or to load structured or unstructured data into a lake house. Um, but Having a lake house doesn't really mean that you're going to build an actual lake house. No, you can also use this sort of as a folder structure inside um, Microsoft Fabric. Now, let me just show you what happens if you create a lake house. Now, basically, the one lake structure in architecture, it's all built just upon, um, on AWS Gen 2. And each workspace, maybe one or many AWS Gen 2 accounts, but basically underneath, it's one lake. It's just one lake that's a virtual layer across all of these uh, different items you might have. So each workspace will be sort of a container and inside that container, you will have tables and files and links to um, the objects, the artifacts that you're creating. If you're creating a lake house, you'll create a lake house folder, a warehouse will be a warehouse folder and so on. So, so on. now, um, so what I'm doing here today is I'm creating a lake house called landing zone, which basically is a logical structure inside my one lake, which will allow me to place the files that I see as a landing zone inside that specific folder to actually sort of logically start structuring my um, data engineering solution that I'm building. I'm building sort of a lake house on top of Microsoft Fabric. Now, um, there's two ways of doing this. One is actually loading that data to the files portion, and then basically you can load whatever you want to load, load in there. Um, tables, however, as you can see them here, tables are actually um, physical tables that you can create, so delta tables or start tables that you're going to create inside that lake house. So they're actually managed tables at that point in time. Now files, you can actually go shape packs, whatever you want, um, just to the files portion of it. Now, there's two ways of doing this. There's one, one lake shortcuts, and there's the pipelines. Pipelines is basically loading that data actually to the files part and actually putting that data on that one lake ADS, uh, one lake ADS check two accounts, uh, storage accounts that are underneath it, or you can create a shortcut. And a shortcut will basically just um, link data to your uh, one lake. It will show the data, if you connect with Azure Storage as well, it shows the data like it is. However, it is just a redirect. So if you're connecting to one lake using that storage export, it is just that uh, link that steps. So you can actually see the data there and immediately if you have option to manipulate it, manipulate the data there. However, it is not on one lake itself. It's basically any action you're going to do is going to happen in that old AWS Gen 2 search console. So you're reading from that, that basically the cost that you're going to put on that data that has been shortcut, that can be done to existing AWS Gen 2 and AWS S3 at this point in time. Um, they can also both work at the files or table level. I'll show you later in a different video how to do that for the tables. So now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create first a pipeline that's going to move data to a landing zone. Now we're actually going to take data from a SQL server, and it's just SQLDB actually, and move that data over to the files portion of our uh, one link. After that, I'm going to tap into an existing landing zone that I've created. So let's say you've got an existing landing zone, you have all um, different sources that you're using with, for example, Azure Data Factory to load that data from Oracle, SQL, all those things into AWS Gen 2, and you would then like to already tap into that data without rewriting that full process. I'll show you how to do that with a shortcut. So let's dive into that. As you can see here, I'm in my Fabric homepage, fabricmicrosoft.com. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first going to switch over to Cygnus Data Engineering, so I can do it by clicking here, or I can click just over here, Data Engineering. I want to switch to the right workspace, which is my Fabric Special workspace, and I've created all of the few things. One thing I've created over here is that landing zone. And landing zone, as I showed you before, is just sort of a folder that's now inside that one lake, uh, basically to store all data that's coming in from uh, different various sources that I want to store inside that specific folder structure. That's my landing zone. Um, and what I'm going to do there, I'm going to load data there from the SQL DB. As you can see, I already prepared sort of a data pipeline. Now, what does that data pipeline do? First thing I'm doing is I'm getting a bunch of SQL tables, just basically a metadata fetch. I'm selecting from system tables where the table has to be sale, which means I'm loading one table called fact sale, and I'm just looping those tables that I'm getting in there for each loop, and then moving that using a public data class. 
This is all very sim similar to whatever you do in Synapse uh, pipelines or in Azure Data Factory pipelines. Uh, but there's one main difference if you're going to copy that data over. So let's dive into the copy data. There we go. So right here. So general source will all still stay the same, but however, destination changes. In destination, I can now just say, hey, load that to that lake house and load that to that landing zone lake house. And there's two ways you can load it there. You can either say to files or to tables. If you're going to load to tables, you're going to directly put that into a table. However, files allow you to just take any structure or structure data and just move that across, for example, CSV files that you have or, or chasing files or whatever. You can just move that across. And the, the other part just stays the same, as you can see over here. I've got a concatenation where I'm just building landings on one leg, item S, uh, so the schema name, table name, and just loading it that. You might want to add, for example, load time or anything like that if you're doing incremental loading, just basically like you would build your landing zone out with Azure Data Factory. It's one way to do it. So if we would go and look what I've done here, we will look at our landing zone over here. You can see under the files, I've got the landing zone, I've got the effective, it's still, and there I have that specific file that I created just a while ago. Now, let's say I want to tap into an existing lake. So I want to tap into existing data in the landing zone that I've already created, so I don't want to make that whole landing zone again. I just want to tap into what I've already got. How do you do that? You basically just right click, well, I click over here, new shortcut. Now I've got this uh, data lake storage chain too. Um, I'm just going to click on it, and in a few uh, seconds it will load that uh, prompt. And what I need to give in here, over here, is that specific URL I'm using. Note that there's DFS here. Make sure you use DFS. If you block, it does block. I'll show you how I do that. So I'll basically just take that original one. So I've got my landing zone folder over here, which has some data in there. And I'll say create a new connection. I'm not going to use organization plan because this is not in my tenant. It's based across tenants in different tenant. I'll then use the account key just to make things easier for me. There we go. Paste that one in. And I'll in this background, the access landing zone. So there we go. Next. And this is the area you get if you don't change to blob. So let's go over here, put it in DFS. Next. And now it does work. Now let's say this is my existing landing zone. And the subpart is the one so that I will do right here. Just make sure it's right. Go create. And what now happens? It basically just starts linking in the existing data lake that I already have that lane landing zone I've created over there. Now it exists over here. As you can see over here, I've got a landing. I've got two different tables. Let's go to the roles tables. It's JSON folder, which is constructed by day and then by hour. And as you can see over here, I can find those JSON files that I've created. Now well, that basically shows you how you can actually tap into existing data, moving data either from a from a new source and pushing that into that landing zone layer that I've created in my uh, Microsoft uh, Fabric One Lake, or I can just tap into existing um, Azure Data Lake storage or a Amazon AWS S3 or any other One Lake items I have there using that shortcut mechanism. So loading a landing zone or tapping into an existing one is really easy. So I've done this in about five minutes to show you how to actually tap into existing data. Now. If you have any questions about it, just write them in the comments. Uh, if this was the first time you're visiting our channel and you like the content, just make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you like the video, just give us a thumbs up. As always, from the Synapse Espresso team, Stan, thank you for watching. Bye.